The China Daily is an English language newspaper hosted by the propaganda department of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party and administered by the press office of the State Council of China. According to newly disclosed documents in the U.S. Department of Justice Foreign Agents Registration Act between May and October of this year, several U.S. mainstream media outlets accepted nearly $2 million in printing and advertising fees from China Daily. What is all this printing and advertising used for? These paid pieces of content look like legitimate news and boast editorials with inserts often called China Watch, offering pro-Beijing perspectives on China's economy, Chinese culture, or China's geopolitics. For example, in August of this year, the New York Times quietly removed hundreds of these paid advertisements from its website. One of them was a 2019 video ad promoting tourism in the Xinjiang region that portrays the oppressed Uyghur people as content under Beijing's rule. In fact, before the U.S. Department of Justice listed a number of Chinese media outlets as foreign agents this year, the China Daily had already been registered as a foreign agent in 1983. In other words, the U.S. mainstream media has always known that China Daily is the mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party, but still put on their distorted propaganda and help them to brainwash the American public. The latest document shows that China Daily paid more than 85,000 U.S. to the Wall Street Journal and 340,000 to the Los Angeles Times for advertising in the six months from May 2020 to October 2020. Foreign Policy Magazine, the UK-based Financial Times, and the Canadian-based Globe and Mail got paid 100,000, 220,000, and 130,000, respectively. In fact, previously disclosed FARA documents also show that the China Daily has been publishing advertisements on US mainstream media for more than a decade to promote CCP policies and glorify the CCP's image. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, from November 2016 to April 2020, China Daily has paid more than 19 million U.S. in printing and advertising fees to U.S. media outlets. In addition to paid advertisements, China Daily also publishes weekly newspapers in Hong Kong, the U.S., Europe, Japan, Korea, India, Australia, Arabia, Africa, and more. There was also a China National Image magazine, which has been published since 1992, with the Washington Post, New York Times, International Herald Tribune, Daily Telegraph, Financial Times, and other major newspapers in Europe, America, and Asia. Beijing also adopted another strategy. If the targeted media does not cooperate, then buy it. The German, Süddeutsche Zeitung, described China's propaganda system as an invisible hand, and some international institutions estimated that China has dramatically increased its investment in propaganda media to about 1.3 billion euros a year. Reuters reports that China Daily is only one part of the Chinese Communist Party's vast propaganda system. China's global television network, CGTN, provides programs in five languages on six channels that are broadcast in more than 140 countries. China Radio International, CRI, broadcasts programs in 65 languages in more than 70 countries. It is also the largest shareholder in at least 33 radio stations in 14 countries. Despite having such a national media machine, China's official international media forums and seminars usually include issues such as Western media hegemony and how to positively report China. Over the past few years, thousands of foreign journalists, mainly from developing countries, have attended journalism training in China. Moreover, Xinhui News Agency, Global TV, and Radio International have also established the Belt and Road News Cooperation Alliance, which includes 72 media outlets from 42 countries. CCP censorship has long been extended overseas. Bloomberg News reported in March 2019 that China has invested 3 billion euros in stakes in media companies in Europe alone. Azad Issa, a columnist for the South African newspaper The Independent, was fired after hours of reporting on the repression of the Muslim minority in China's Xinjiang province. The newspaper was later discovered to have two Chinese stakeholders, one of which is China-backed African Development Fund. Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping said in a 2016 conference to the media that, to where the readers are, to where the audience is, the propaganda must reach out. Marx有一句名言, 批判的武器, 
，当然不能代替武器的批判。物质力量只能用物质力量来摧毁，但是理论一经掌握群众，就会变成物质力量。CGTN, which is directly affiliated with Beijing, opened an office in London in 2019, employing 90 staff members. The fact that both the BBC and Deutsche Welle were banned in China raises the question of why there is a double standard. Chinese style. A large group of thugs pushing us away, and we've no choice but to leave. In the face of opposition, in July 2020, the UK Office of Communications (Ofcom) defined CGTN as one of the overseas propaganda outlets of the Chinese Communist Party (CCTV) and claimed they had committed serious breaches of British principles of fairness and privacy. For instance, broadcasting British detective Peter Humphrey was arrested by Chinese authorities for allegedly stealing personal information from Chinese citizens while investigating bribery cases in China. He was forced to confess to a crime. Another example is of Swedish bookseller Guo Minhui, who was forced to confess to the crime of illegally providing intelligence overseas. From the very moment that you're dropped into a cell, you're there to be crushed. You're there to have your spirit broken. You're there to break down and confess to things that you may may have not done. CGTN's propaganda is much more sophisticated than that of China Daily, with foreign commentators appearing on air from time to time. In 2019, CGTN America registered about 180 journalists, and the cost of hiring that year was 35.2 million. If you take away the salaries of about 10% of the executives and 10% of commissions and others, the average income of CGTN journalists would be 156,000. When compared to salary data from Indeed.com, as of March 2019, the average hourly salary of a U.S. journalist is $35.54, which translates into an annual income of about $75,000. It's suggested that CGTN could be providing as much as double the average income than other media outlets. Consider this. Former CNN employee Sean Caleb's, who joined CGTN after a stint at CNN, is a frequent critic of Trump. He pushed the 2016 RussiaGate narrative on CGTN, claiming that the Mueller report was inaccurate in setting the record straight for Trump. He praised the Chinese Communist Party's environmental actions, despite the fact that the country consistently accounts for the world's largest share of greenhouse gas emissions and has some of the world's worst air and water pollution. And he touted the Communist Party's ecological red lines as a measure to protect the environment and condemned the U.S. for moving in the opposite direction. Other former CNN employees who turned to CGTN include Karina Huber, Aishi Nabdar, Jim Spellman, Nan Nadu, and others. However, working for the Chinese Communist Party is not a high-income, low-risk affair. The Australian Chinese CGTN anchorwoman Cheng Lei was suddenly arrested in China in September this year on charges of engaging in criminal activities that endanger China's national security. And although the Australian authorities have provided her with consular protection, she has not yet been heard from. CGTN America anchors Jim Spellman and Mike Walter, among others, have tweeted their concerns. It seems like the Chinese Communist Party system and the rule of law in China, which they have been praising all day, are not what they thought they would be. In other words, the penetration and influence of the China Daily and the official Chinese media on the free world is no longer news. Their actions have been going on for decades, and the West is not taking them seriously. On October 21st, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced at a press conference that the State Department has designated six more Chinese media outlets controlled by the Communist Party as foreign missions, marking the third time such an action has been taken. We simply want to ensure that American people, consumers of information, can differentiate between news written by a free press and propaganda distributed by the Chinese Communist Party itself. Uh, good news! This Friday, the EU High Representative Joseph Borrell and I will launch the U.S.-EU dialogue on China. I'm confident that the discussion will deepen our long-term engagement with EU friends on this important issue. Voice of America guest commentator, China expert He Qingliang, writes in her book, "The Chinese Communist Party's propaganda system was not developed in a day." Back in 2001, when the international community had high expectations from China, there were signs of reform in the Chinese media, such as the July 1st speech, 
of former Communist Party leader Hu Jintao in 2003. Since China's accession to the WTO in 2001, many people were encouraged to believe that foreign investment in China would make China follow international practices and help accelerate the process of political democratic reform. But this hope was soon dashed, because it turned out that it was not the foreign investment that changed the rules of the game in China, but rather their adaptation to China's corrupted environment. The foreign media has learned self-discipline in the process of entering China, and they are highly conscientious about complying with the Chinese government's demands to control websites and filter out information that the Chinese authorities don't like.